Hello, everyone, and welcome to TFYLP, Transformers for Your Listening Pleasure, episode number XXX. I don't know what it is. This is a, a pre-recorded episode. Uh, I'm putting this episode up uh, because either I can't be here or I am preoccupied and can't uh, broadcast live tonight. So we are gathered together uh, to uh, wed these two in holy matrimony, uh, Mr. Jim Black and Robert Simmons. Do you, Hi. And, and as best man, we have Christian Russell. Hello. I am the best man. <laughs> yes. This episode is rated triple X. Yes. Because there's a, there, is, there is a bald dude on here. Yeah. Couple. Giggity, giggity. All right. <laughs> you guys are so weird. Yes. Who else but Quagmire? <laughs> isn't, it, uh, isn't, it, isn't it moronic, you know? But uh, yeah, we're we're here. We are not live, unfortunately. But uh, we appreciate you guys uh, tuning in this week, uh, and that'll do us for this episode. We'll see you next time on TFY. Thanks. <laughs> no, <I'm> Bye. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Best quickie ever. <laughs> yes. Now you'll need a cigarette if you smoke. Uh, it, maybe you'll vape. Or I don't know. I, who knows? Vaping's nasty too. I mean, I, I smoked once. Yeah. Yeah, once. It was, it was a gas grill and it was arm hair. It was, it was not pretty at all. Oh, oh. You know, I remember uh, I was like real, real little. My mom, she smoked like a pack and a half a day. Um, yeah. And uh, I might have been like nine. And I just grabbed one of her cigarettes that was in the ashtray. You know, she she said it over there and she was like reading the book. And I just took it and I took a puff of it. I'm like, I see her doing it all the time. What must be great about this? She didn't see me at first. I took a puff of it and then all of a sudden I'm sitting there going, bah, 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 bah. she looked at me and she slapped it out of my head. Uh, I'm like, I, I don't, I don't see the appeal of this, you know, and I never, never did it again. I, I still don't, you know, but Hey, people love it. I, uh, one time I saw my mom drinking Sprite, and I was like, I want some Sprite. She's like, you don't want this Sprite. I'm like, I want the Sprite. Give me the Sprite. And she's like, fine. And I was just like, Bleh. <laughs> But unlike the cigarette story, I have again taken part of the liquors. But <laughs> Part of the liquors. It was, it was, yeah, it was, it was a while later, though, before I did that again. It was not Sprite, <laughs> right? There was some Sprite, but there was more than just Sprite. You know, it reminds me of the first of the liquors. First time I ever tried any form of alcohol. Um, again, I was probably around the age that I, I took the perf, uh, first puff. You know, uh, I got home from school uh, before my mom and dad did because my mom she worked. I don't know if you all remember a, a, a old uh, store. There's still some around called the Ben Franklin. Uh, they used to be more of a department store, yep. not just a craft store. Uh, but my mom worked at a, a Ben Franklin, and she usually got off around 4 o'clock, and I would get off the bus sometimes around 3.30. So I had like a half hour or so uh, before she would get home. And I was in the kitchen making my little snack like I always did. And then I remembered I saw her and Dad uh, once in a while would get a a, a big glass mason jar of water out from uh, above the cabinet above the refrigerator and they'd pour just a little little glass of it and they both drink it and then they put put the little glass jar or the big glass jar back in the cabinet i'm like what water. is so great about that water it was clear you know so i'm like you know i'm gonna try it so i grabbed a dixie cup climbed up there got the, got the jar poured it uh, poured out a nice big old full dixie cup of it Put the lid back on it, put it back in the cabinet, took a full swig of that thing. It was moonshine. I was throwing up all over the kitchen. I mean, it was like instant vomit everywhere. And about that time, my brother came home. Now, my brother was like, what have you done? And then he smelled the alcohol and he's like, oh my God, oh my God. How much older was he? Or is he? Yeah, he's he's like twenty years older than me. So okay, so he immediately knew what 15, was going 16 on. Fifteen, sixteen years older. Yeah, honestly, uh, but um, but yeah, he um, uh, he was like trying to get me uh, calmed down, and there was still vomit all over the floor. And that's when mom walked in, and yeah, 
I haven't liked alcohol since, but I will partake once in a while. So have, have you at least learned how to utilize uh, Dixie cups properly since then? <laughs> Because you know the the, yeah. the lines on the Dixie cups are supposed to be measurement lines. No, it right? wasn't one of those one of those kind of Dixie cups. It was like a little like the little ones that you put in the bathroom. Oh, I don't. The little don't paper ones. That. The little paper ones. They're also made by Dixie. I, I don't. I'm, I don't drink where I tinkle, and I don't tinkle where I drink. I'm surprised the moonshine didn't eat through that Dixie cup. To be honest, <laughs> I don't know what proof it was, but it was. I mean, it's like as soon as it hit my stomach, it came right back, and everything I ate the day before, you know, it was like, literally poison, delicious, delicious poison. Yeah, <laughs> he, he but, literally couldn't eat them. But but real Kentucky moonshine was my first uh, exposure to alcohol, and yeah. But anyway, we are here to talk about Transformers. Uh, because this is Transformers for your listening pleasure, uh, you know, and we we sometimes yeah <laughs> we do like to talk about toys. We like to talk about uh, the characters, and we like to talk about things surrounding the hobby. And this is a topic that we've actually spoken a little bit about. I believe Jim was on the episode the last time we talked on similar nature. But as you can see up there at the top of the screen, we're talking about. Uh, dealing with negativity in the fandom as a fan. And we'll also touch a little bit about dealing with negativity from outside the fandom toward yourself being a fan. And uh, this episode will probably help a lot of people, not just being in, uh, having been in the fandom uh, for a long time, but more specifically people that might have uh, recently started collecting or... Uh, are a little bit shy about their collecting because, you know, let's be honest, there are some people out there that, that are a little ashamed to admit they collect adult, uh, collect children's toys as an adult. Um, but, you know, we're here to tell you that there's nothing wrong with it. I've been doing it for decades now. Rob's been doing it for decades. Uh, Jim Black... Christian hasn't been alive for decades, but yeah. when he hits that mark... <laughs> He's like it's almost three decades. <laughs> uh huh. Sure. Okay. He was like eight when Armada hit. So, wasn't it? Was it eight? I was eleven. Eleven. Okay. So, yeah. So uh, no, RID I was is nineteen. Uh, I was nine when uh, RID hit. I was like twenty something. <laughs> but yeah. Sprite. That's why you have me. I have different perspectives. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, dealing with negativity is something that we, as fans, generally have to do uh, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, especially if you frequent message boards, any kind of social media uh, that is uh, part of the fandom. You know, if you, if you go to Facebook, I mean, I'm a part of many Facebook groups, and you cannot scroll through a Facebook group without seeing one person bitching about something, uh, calling somebody a name because they they feel a certain way about a certain figure. Uh, you know, it's like I hate DX9, their shit, and fan toys, fan toys, yay. You know, or oh, I'm sorry, fans toys, yeah. Uh, but there there's negativity everywhere. Uh, I know. You can go to work and somebody, uh, they, they find out that you collect toys and they, they rib you for it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I luck out that my coworkers, they, they, they kind of think it's cool. Uh, a few of them have actually checked out this podcast, you know, cause we have a lot of downtime at my job. Uh, and they'll pull it up on YouTube. They've pulled it up on YouTube. And one guy sat through two episodes and he's like, this is really cool. He says, I, I, I didn't realize this, you know, this is, there's, there's a whole fandom out there. And some of them are kind of geeks too, you know, just different kinds of geeks. You know, we, we collect toys. Uh, some of them, they're, they're video game geeks. And some of them, they're, uh, one guy, he's really into, uh, like, like role-playing board games and stuff, you know. So, uh, everybody, everybody has their likes and, and they can relate to you in some way or uh, shape or form. Uh, but then there's always inevitably the people is like, what are you five? Uh, you know, uh, the, the short answer is just tell them go fuck off, you know, but 
you know, we're, we're going to sit here and we're going to talk a little bit about perspectives and, um, and how to uh, approach, uh, talking to people about these things and how to, uh, and ha- generally keep your attitude upbeat because this is a, a, a hobby of, of fun. You know, I mean, we, we, we love, we love what we love for a reason. Uh, and, I'll kick it off by saying, me personally, I collect for me. I collect what I like. I don't inc- I don't collect to impress anybody else. I don't collect to make somebody else happy. I collect because it makes me happy, and that's all that matters. This is the one thing I do in my life for me. You know, I don't. Yeah, I collect toys just to you know get more women. Yeah, I mean, you use that that rail How's racer. How's that work so far? I only got one. Yeah. Does she like rail racer? She doesn't even know what it is. No. No, you're not using it properly. Rail race. <laughs> Just transforming, uh, transform him into his other mode. <laughs> and then there's also Nexus Maximus. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget. Christian, that was so funny. funny. Chris, that was so funny. Christian sitting here like, oh, my virgin ears. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Put up I'm not slander a, about me. I'm not a virgin. I have had sex once before. <laughs> I have sex all the time, just not with other people. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Don't put that out about me. God. I'm putting it out about myself. I'm married now, so I mean, that's just that's how it goes. Hey, whether her name's Rosie or whether her name's uh, Ros- uh, Rosita. It doesn't matter, you know. Hey, Rosie Palm. That's that's the joke, Christian. You look confused. Uh, oh, I, now, yeah, now, I did not now, know at all. all. Yeah. Let, let, let's, let's not kink shame. You know, everybody has things that makes them maximize. The, the so, one I know by is Pamela Anderson. Pamela. Oh, that's Anderson. good. I like it. Yes. Yes. But see, hey, you know, that's, that's these these are insults that you can sling back at people that are negative at you. You know, we're being negative toward Christian right now because hey, he's he's the young one on the on the podcast right now. So I'm not being negative. It's friendly ribbing between it's friends. Friendly ribbing. I don't yeah. think you guys actually believe any about any of that stuff about it's, me. It's ribbing ribbing for his pleasure. Rib, rib for your listening pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Or, 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 was it, or was it for a rib? The innuendo mm-hmm. just keep That's going to be the podcast after dark. In your endo. Yeah. Oh. Which we actually need to do an after dark or after hours episode sometime soon. After uh, dark. Yeah. Or after dark. Yes. After after hours. TFYLP after hours. We've done a several. I think the last one it's... we did, Aaron Archer was on. That's been a while. So My hero. Yes. I, th- I think that was the last one I was on. Was it? Yeah, I've, I've been out for a little while, too. Been pulling some overtime on the weekends, so I hadn't hey, been able to join. extra money is good. You know, oh, I, I'm, I'm out of debt now. I just... Hey, ooh, more money for toys. Eventually. Yes. Still looking for Ripper Snapper. Yes. You will love Toy him. money is the best money. Yes. I, mean, I, I technically have one, but, you know, I need the... Need the oh, one. you need the bigger one, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually talked about that on the episode we recorded last night, like almost midnight. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a phenomenal toy. But yeah, negative. Since you beat up on me. Can I go now? Yes. Okay. So my key to avoiding all the negativity is to have friends like you guys. That sounds super cheesy and stuff, but. I have my small groups that I talk to and my individual friends that I talk to, and I try to avoid the larger groups. I know. Love you guys. Yeah. But, you know, I talk to Sergio a lot. I talk to uh, (laughs) our friend Nick G a lot. What? Are you guys laughing at Sergio? He's a funny guy. No. I I did that. You complete me. (laughs) Oh. I haven't seen that movie. R.I.P. Vern Troyer. Yeah. If that dates this episode recording. (laughs) I do the same thing that you do, Dorona. I collect what I want. I try not to collect for anybody else. I got into a little bit of that phase a little bit ago. But came back, and then I, I really just I have fun with the people I know. That's why I go to events now. It's not it, you know, Of course, you buy toys. And now I work for Captured Prey as my alter ego, Chip Russell. Ooh, Chip but, Russell. Uh, beyond that, I, I really just I do it to keep in contact with the good friends I've made over the years. You know, and that's, that's one of the things, you know, it's like, 
uh, you know, as I said at the top of the show, the reason for these pre-records is uh, there's there's going to be times that I'm not going to be able to, to actually attend. And one of those uh, instances would be if I were going to a convention, which, you know, Pete's show, uh, uh, Pete's Robot Convention in Cincinnati or Covington. Rather, Pizza Robot Con. Yes. Uh, it's what, at the end of June, I believe? So the beginning of June. Beginning of June. Okay. It's so second weekend. And I, and I will only be able to attend on a Saturday, so that will be probably when one of these episodes may be used. Fun um, fact, the dealer floor is not open on that Saturday. Really? Really? It's only some... open on Sunday. What? I thought there were some, if you pre-registered, there was like some hours on Saturday or some such. Then uh, I may not up. go. I, that's, <laughs> that's the whole reason I want to go. But anyway... Um, you know, going to conventions, and then uh, in July, I'll be gone for a week uh, on family vacation that is non-Transformer related for the first time in years. Uh, li- literally over a decade that I've been, since I've been on a non-Transformer related vacation. And that means going somewhere that there isn't a Transformer it, convention involved. Real quick, it yeah. is Exhibitor Preview Night, 6.30 to 9 on Saturday. Hmm. So... Hmm. Two and a half hours at night. Does that mean you have to be an exhibitor to preview it? Or are you previewing the exhibitors? I think you're previewing the exhibitors if you pre-register for the ticket that gets you into it. It's like, mm. you know. That sounds like a dirty kind of peep show or something. It does. I know what I'm doing on Saturday, though. I am doing that customizing class with the uh, pretender shells. I'd like one of the swerves, since I've got a swerve. Uh, but, eh, I don't know. Everyone's been hating on them, but I, I love them. I think, I think they're it's great. Such a unique idea. I think they're great. I'm, I'm not going to knock them. Um, but anyway, uh, Chris, you were talking about you know collecting for yourself and not anyone else, and uh, you did it for a little while. Uh, mm-hmm. Why did you do it for? Uh, and, and what do you mean by collecting for someone else? Well, it's not for someone else, but it's kind of following the popular collecting trends. Uh, I got lucky. I guess unlucky at the same time is that the relaunch of Masterpiece coincided with me graduating from school and getting a really good job. So all of a sudden I had a lot of disposable income to pour into getting the same releases that everyone else was getting. And once I realized that I was doing that, I was like, well, what makes my collection unique now that I've got what everyone else has? And I didn't like that. So I sold off a bunch of stuff and retooled my collection to be what I like. And that's, that's a good thing to do. You know, I mean, I've, I've done it several times. Uh, you know, uh, Jim, since you haven't been on the show in a while, how are you, how are you dealing with negativity and what are some forms that you actually encounter? Uh, how do I deal with negativity? Yes. You drink a lot. Mm. Go on a bender. It, it, it depends. Um, <laughs> uh, most, most people that I've encountered, uh, just at work or just out in the community, uh, they're generally pretty cool about it. Uh, a lot of them are, are uh, just overtaken by like like this wave of nostalgia because it gets them thinking about you know their childhood. And there was actually a coworker uh, just last week, uh, you know, because a few weeks back he, he and I were talking about uh, you know the collecting thing. He found out I was a toy collector and a, and a transformer collector in specific, and he was talking about how. He used to have a few when, when he was a little kid uh, in the early 2000s. I know. I'm, I'm we're old. Anyway, uh, but he started describing so like Christian. a few yeah. of them. He started describing a few of them, and, and I, I was able to, to figure out what from what he was describing. He was describing uh, uh, Armada Scavenger, Unicron, uh, Energon Optimus, and, and a few odd others from the Unicron trilogy. And uh, you know, I just so happened to uh, have a few of those uh, for sale at the time. And so I, I made 50 bucks and he, he got some of his childhood back. Um, but as far as negativity, uh, ne- negativity, if I can speak, not nativity, not, you know, you're not, yeah, not the Virgin well, ne- Mary. Negativity. Here. <laughs> I, I can't English. Um, I've not really ran into that a whole awful lot. Um, uh, I, I would think a lot more back in high school, and, and and that that era probably about 15 plus years ago uh, but as I've entered my my 20s and 30s uh, that, that's pretty much dropped off for the most part uh, that may be 
due in part to you know the the live action movies the past decade or so and it returning to the forefront of pop culture uh, or any number of factors. And that that, that is a that is a very uh, a very good point. Uh, the the live action movies, for better or for worse, have actually brought Transformers back into uh, what is considered in and cool. Although I think we are on the backside of it, quite honestly. Uh, Definitely. Uh, but Definitely on the backside. <laughs> but I think that... More ways than one. <laughs> but I think that it did bring it into the limelight enough that, that made people remember, hey... Or realize, hey, these things are still around. They're still, they can still be relevant. And I think we, uh, the the fandom got a huge influx of new collectors because of the live action movies. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of them have stuck around. Some of them, you know, got into it and realized, hey, this isn't my, this isn't my bag, baby. Uh, and then they 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 fall away. You know, they they trade in that Swedish and larger pump for something better. And <laughs> it's. It's one of those things that, uh, you know, it's both a blessing and a curse. A lot of uh, a lot of fans don't like the live action movies for one reason or another, and we're not here to talk about the live action movies specifically. But the effect that they have had on this fandom has been generally a good one, I would think. Not just monetarily for the franchise, but also as as like I said, an injection of fresh blood back into the the fandom. Uh, we, we saw lar- the largest BotCon numbers that we've ever seen uh, whenever BotCon was still around, uh, whenever the movie years were at their at their highest. You know, so... Yeah, I mean, I think, also, you know, it's cool to be a nerd lately, you know, compared mm-hmm. to previous days. Um, and then as well as, you know, you know, I'm in my 30s and getting into the later side of the 30s, you know, as we start to become uh, more and more of, you know, that just middle age folk, you know, we kind of set that tone. You know what I mean? Where it's like we're, it just becomes more and more acceptable because more and more people have that nostalgic memories for it. Um, you know, you're not the oddball out anymore. You know, that plus again, you know, like look at the Marvel superhero movies. A lot of that popularity fed on the nostalgia, that, you know, that our generation had on those comics as kids. Um, and then plus, you know, just knocking it out of the park with the movies, you know, obviously helps. Um, well, it's but, you know, one it's just, of those. All, the, all that stuff's more accepting now. One you know? of those terms, uh, uh, geek chic, you know, uh, I think we even had an episode on it about a year or so ago uh, where, you know, we were talking how it's actually in to be geek now. I, I remember whenever I was in high school, geeks were still on that fringe of you're a little bit weird. I don't want to be around you. Now I've got classmates that really didn't want to associate with me back in high school. They're like, "You're cool as hell now," and I'm like, "I'm just me, you know. I, you know, I continued being me, I'm, and I was being me then. And I think the uh, the big problem is, is that, uh, and this is this is a, a good point uh, for people trying to realize uh, how to deal with the negativity. Um, I was being me, but they were not being themselves. They weren't accepting themselves for what they like they were trying to fit in uh, and that's and that's why why a lot of negativity comes at us as fans is other people trying to fit in it's like you don't fit in with my crowd therefore i can't accept what you're doing so i'm going to make fun of you for it and that that type of mindset is just it's it's bandwagoning i guess uh you know they're trying to they're trying to get you on their bandwagon but if you enjoy what you enjoy you know what what difference does it make how that person feels about what you're doing my my philosophy on that is uh, uh they they laugh at me because I'm different i laugh at them because they're all the same saw that on a tur- t-shirt like 10 years ago that was really edgy <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's like it's like 2005 call. They want their T-shirt back. <laughs> Not TFW yeah. 2005. I mean, uh, T- like, the year 2005. Uh, the the real life negativity. Um, I'm a software developer, so like I'm my whole career has always been kind of in that nerd area, you know, with other nerds, and mm-hmm. um, so like professionally, they are people are generally like eh, developers. You know, they're an oddball bunch anyways, you know. So in general, most people are just like, oh, that's Rob. That's part of Rob. It's funny. 
you know, like not in a ha ha laughing at you just, you know, one of those, that's his quirk, you, you know, not, and not in a mean way, but, um, the, ex- ex- the exception of actually my last job, um, a lot of the IT world switches jobs a lot, mm-hmm. like uh, every like year or two, switching jobs. Contra- you know. Contracts are up, you know. Places contracts, I mean, up. layoffs happen. I've, most of my gigs have been full-time, but layoffs happen all the time. You know, they shut down a division. You get rid of software developers. We're not a cheap bunch. You know, it's a very big cost. Um, but my last gig, it, w- it was something to make fun of. Um, and the thing is, I was there with – it was a small team, but it was a lot of people I knew. Um, you know, like one of the guys I went to college with, you know, so overall I was just like, meh, but it is definitely a little different when your boss, um, you can tell he's definitely laughing at you and not with you. And it was just like, I mean, I mean and, he, and, and he wasn't a bad boss or anything for the most part, but that was definitely something that was just like, all right, let's do our work. And then I don't want to hang out with you anymore. You know, mm. not, not in a mean way. It's just, we're different people. Let's just accept it and make some good software together and then go about our ways. Um, but, you know, he was a little older and there was one other team member that was uh, a little older, you know, a, a generation up. And the response from them was negative. And, you know, I, I needed my paycheck. I need my health insurance more than that. Um, you guys know my, my situations. But it, uh, you know, generally just ignoring it was to do it, you know, and just keep my cool and not worry about it. You know, that's the the little bits of negativity as they happened were, you know, it's on them. It's not on me. It's not something I needed to correct, you know, it's just like, and my other friends that were on that team, it would happen and they would just be like, Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? Or they would tell me after like, God, I wish you would stop doing that. You know what I mean? It's um, a form of, it's a form of, uh, uh, workplace, uh, uh, harassment. what's the word? Harassment, I guess is, uh, yeah. Cause I mean, it's you're being, you're being, environment. yeah, you're yeah. being badgered about something for no reason other than like, the person it, it doesn't would, like you. It would happen with anything was, was what was annoying. Like, so there's the toy collecting thing, you know, I was like, Oh, I got to go to my convention. You know, not that bot cons are happening, but you know, I went to TFCon last year to make up for it. So, you know, there's some jokes about it and it's again, it's obviously like, ha ha. You gotta go do that robot thing. Don't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and it just generally just terse answers. Be like, yeah, I had a great time. Saw a lot of my friends and I'd leave it at that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it, it would bleed into anything else about me that might come up. And so he would always say it like he was just kidding around, but I could tell it was more than that, but it never got enough to where, you know, like I was like, Oh, I need to call HR or anything, which, you know, I could, I could have if I needed to, but, um, you know, and it never got to that point. And I think at the end of it, you know, I think he liked working with me and respected me as a, as a developer, which as a boss, that's all I really need. Yeah. Um, well, and you also maintain a level of, of understanding that, your happiness isn't dependent on whether or not he likes you or not too. I guess. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it had started like I was getting negative reviews or something and I felt it was because of that, or if he was singling me out in a different way because of it, you know, I, I you know, I might've raised the flag, but those things didn't happen. So, you know, again, it, it was fine, but it always kind of irked me. It's just like, come on, let it go. Can we talk about, can we talk about work, please? Can we talk about work? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm happy to say that, you know, with my career, which like 15 years of software development, that's that's all that comes to mind anymore. You know, if there was something else that was so minor that didn't didn't stick around. Well, I think in large, though, like you said at the beginning, uh, you live or your your workplace, or your work environment is generally that that is inhabited by geeks, essentially. Uh, you know, and I'm kind of on the other end of that. You know, I've, I've said many times, I'm a truck driver. I drive a semi. And that is not the type of job that you typically associate with geeks. You know, usually, you know, you, you like you got you got your guys that like fishing and hot rods and uh, motorcycles and cars. Well, you can and, you, know. you can give them a fishing hot rod. I can yes. see it on the shelf behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that one right there. Uh, but there... Uh, it's just generally not a an environment that you would expect a lot of a, a lot of geeks to be in. Now, I know that there are fellow truck drivers who are collectors. Uh, you know, I, I know Rob Milton, uh, who uh, a member of the realm of collectors. He's he's a fellow truck driver. You know, it's it's kind of like a, a camaraderie. You know, we we kind of know what each other's uh, feels like. You know. 
you can go into, I know, Insane Galvatron, uh, who helped f- found this podcast. He's also a truck driver. And I, I've heard him say many times, you know, uh, I've been actually been on the phone with him the last day before a convention, before he's heading out. People in the background say, hey, uh, Stuart, you heading to that robot convention? You know, you know, the, uh, you know giving, him, giving him a rib. Uh, because they they might think it's silly, but it's something that he enjoys. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I feel lucky because my coworkers, I I don't feel that they they think less of me for what I do and what I enjoy. Uh, they don't rib me for it, and if they do, uh, if they have or if they do, they don't do it in front of my face. They don't do it to where I feel like, hey, I'm a shithead. I don't, I don't get that feeling, uh, and, I, and I feel lucky for that, but I have worked in places before as a truck driver that people's like, you what? You're going where? You collect what? Why? You know. Uh, Meanwhile, they're meticulously managing their fantasy sports league. Yes. Um, <laughs> it was like literally the same thing, guy. Yeah, literally. And we're all, uh, and and again, like that T-shirt says, you know, we're all geeks of uh, about something. Uh, you know, whether it be you know sports, whether it be toys, uh, baseball cards, uh, fishing, uh, working on cars, what have you. Uh, we we all have something that we enjoy, and there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you know, uh, we we just recently had a new AC heating and air uh, system put in this house. And the, one of the installers, uh, he was actually installing the thermostat. And I was actually in here editing something for the podcast. And he overheard it. And he, he kind of stepped to the door here and knocked behind me. And he looked in here and he's like, holy crap. And he goes, yeah. I, I said, come on in. And he, he looked over here, which is where all my masterpieces are. And the very first thing he said, dude, the original star screen, which he pointed at masterpiece star screen, but... Hey, kudos to the dude. He recognized he G1 Starscream. And uh, and he's like, I remember him. I remember him too. You know, I thought that was cool. And he he thought it was cool as hell. You know, he's like I love when that happens. You know, he's like Thanks, cable installers. <laughs> yeah. He he's like I had no idea. And then there the antithesis antithesis of that was way back whenever my collection was was at its biggest. Uh, back in probably 2004, 2005, um, I had probably around anywhere between two and 4,000 figures. I mean, they were everywhere. Uh, you know, big totes full of sealed stuff, you know, stacked to the ceiling. My entertainment center was covered. Uh, it was like the, the top of it had every G1 combiner with the exception of Monstructor complete all across the top of it. And then I had all the TFC book style reissues, all the Hasbro reissues, all in there like books, uh, and then loose versions of those same figures in front of those uh, those book style. A pizza delivery guy comes over, the door opens up, and he's just sitting there and he's kind of looking around in the in in the living room there, you know, with uh, with all the toys, and he goes, and I quote, "Looks like a fucking Toys R Us exploded in there, man," you know. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not delivering pizzas, boy. <laughs> you know, uh, but hey, don't knock pizza delivery. Everybody's got to make a paycheck. Hey, you know, don't only because he knocked me. But I, I, you know, I was giving it right back to him. I wasn't ashamed of it. I'm like, yeah, that's it's my. Oh, hobby. he meant it in a negative way. Like yeah. I could see somebody saying that. Like no, it, oh, he, he sounded not in a very way. negative to me. Yeah, mm-hmm. he. Well, that's because you hate Toys R Us. Well, okay, fine. Yeah, in all fairness, there are much better toy stores than Toys R Us. I mean, there's there's one I can yeah, think Toys of. Toys R Us doesn't uh, exist. Huh? Exactly. Oh, sure. I mean, that, but there's one that comes to mind that has uh, great toys, great prices, and great service. <gasps> Who is that? Yeah. What one would that be, Duran? Do you remember? Uh, it's on the tip of my TF Source? Captured. <laughs> oh Lord! <laughs> you said the name that has uh, should now be should not be named. I mean, when you set them up that easy for me, I'm going to knock them out of the park. You know, I'm I'm going to take a video clip of this recording, and I'm going to send it to Orson, and you will forever be banned. You will not not get 24 stacks coins. You will get a a flaming bag. Damn. You will get a bag. 23. 
Yeah, you will get a bag of gummy dicks in your next you'll, order. You'll get the business <laughs> end of Rail right Racer. You, you'll I'm get the business end of Rail Racer, but he'll be in robot mode. <laughs> <laughs> Christian's like, hold my beer. <laughs> but I'm hoping he has some gummy dicks that somebody sent him. <laughs> no. No. You, you can yes, order yes, them in bulk yes. from a website, just saying. And how would you know this, Jim? Because my sister loves to perform very wonderful, mean pranks. You have received a bag of gummy dicks before. No, but I know someone who has. Oh. It's honestly a riot. So yeah, who like is that. the answer if I was wrong? <laughs> 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 where did those come from, Christian? They came from the lovely Captured Prey. Oh, it, it, was, even his, were those? it, was, it was his free gift. There's 23... Uh, X Trans Box Crank and Stack Stacks Master Mini Series coins. Oh, I didn't know. Here, what let's those were. let's like open one. Scrabble tiles. <laughs> it's not like he doesn't have another one to keep. It's sealed. not like I. Yeah, right. I got to keep them sealed. So that's. Yeah, a crank and stack. One side. That's the other side. They're the actually metal. kind of pretty. They're, they're very pretty. I didn't need 23 of them, but uh, totally here we are. Do you even have that toy? No. <laughs> I had both of them, and they, they were okay. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, you know, it seems to be the end thing with your free gift to get a collector's coin. So you Should, know, I, should it, I tell the story, Duran? Sure. Why okay, not? Okay, so this this story is from uh, Christmas time, uh, this, past, this past Christmas. Uh, because of, you know, TF Source being what they are, I had ordered what was it bounce back for me one for me one for duran and one for orson from tf source and they were running a promo that if you got three hundred dollars in an order they would send you a free gift a free gift and i was like i was like wow for a three hundred dollar threshold to get a free gift that has to be you know something something pretty good at least a, i love at those three hundred dollar free things at least a deluxe or something other you know? yeah that's what i was thinking like a you know a, a toy I, I opened the box and it was an mp hot rod coin that was my free gift with my three hundred dollar order, like, and I was just like, I'm, I mean, "Yay, <laughs> thanks!" But like, really? Like, I would have rather just had nothing. Yeah, I did keep that coin because I, you know, didn't have it for my my release. But it's like, for three hundred dollars, that's the free gift. And since then, Orson has been sending me all sorts of crazy stuff in my Captured Prey orders. As your free gift. As my free gift, the first thing he ever sent me was a piece of paper with the Capture Prey logo printed on it with a note that said, tape this to your window, which I did. And then I moved, so it's not taped to my window anymore right now, but I did. <laughs> you should have left it on your window. <laughs> Maybe. But it wasn't when, even when color move, printed or when, anything. When it was you, just, you know, you sticker from, right there. Yeah, when you move from where you're at right now, leave a Capture Prey logo taped to your window. <laughs> I'm sure they'll love that. And then what else did he send me? He sent me one more thing. Oh, he sent me a bundle of loose instructions and file cards for Titans Return figures. Oh. And now 23 coins. By the way, listeners, if you, if you guys I want, want these things, I will send them to you. Please take them from me. I don't need 23 of these things. Are you coming to TFCon Chicago? Yeah. yeah bring them and I'll, I'll take one off your hands. Okay. It's Hopefully I won't gift. have any by then. It will be a Are free you gift. To... It will be a free gift. Well, stick it stick I'll, it in a pocket somewhere for me. I'll, I'm sure I'll Jim Black would love to have one. I've already got one, so I, I don't need one. But Are you sure you don't need like four or five more? No. I, I don't suppose I would mind one. I will send them to you guys. Just so you know. And any listener, we, we can put it as part of the Patreon. If you subscribe <laughs> for a dollar a month, I will send you one of these coins. <laughs> Spe speaking of sending people things... Um, Duran, do you happen to know does uh, does Don still need a supreme or a uh, actually no supreme cheat or no we have one no I'm one for I'm just waiting to get a t-shirt in and uh, then it will be sent out okay okay because I found a place locally that has one yeah I'm still uh, the the place that I got the t-shirts that I made before uh, it's a good place but they are still rather expensive there I'm looking for a, a an economic way to get the t-shirts made uh, that won't like break me up because so we just get, you were if just only we'd had a t-shirt maker on the show hmm. i know just hmm. throw the cheetor in with the shirt then and just ship, ship it to him or... and actually uh sergio's made a few shirts um 
I don't know I, what he did. For I did that, try to go. Th- I did try to go that route first, and it could not help. Too much. Yes, could not help. And uh, well, and it's uh, it's also too small a run, you know, because I don't need that many right off the top of my right off the top. Know. Those shirts that those shirts that Sergio made a couple years ago, Rob, they were like they were twenty bucks. I think he made under twenty of them, right? The beast beast mode ones. Yeah, I, I didn't pick one up, but that's what I was thinking of. But you also oh, have to understand he's not working for that that printer anymore. I don't, I, think, no, I don't, he, I don't think he got those through. Right? I don't think he got no. it through that. Oh, okay. Let's ask him. <laughs> anyway, can I? Can we talk about, or can I talk about my experiences with interacting with people and yes. having this hobby? Absolutely. No. And there, there's a reason I am the way I am about it now. But I want to. Jim seems tell offended. My, that tell you're my offended. origin story. Oh, Jim, you're offended. You can go first. No, I was just I was just hoping you would deal with my negativity. Oh, well, <laughs> deal with it, mother. <laughs> I will deal with it. Uh, when I was in school, so this was in in the you know mid to late-ish 90s elementary middle school. school kind of deals. Okay. Little little kid school. Uh, I got beat up for liking Transformers. On the playground people would hit me and fight me. Really? Because Power Rangers was better or Pokémon was better. But yeah, I, I got actually... That's in era. Okay. I got what? beat up. And I See, didn't want to get beat up anymore, so I, I began hiding that I like Transformers. I, I can't relate because the era I grew up in, Transformers were the shit. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I'm, I'm just saying what happened. It was Beast Wars I mean, times, and I guess yeah. people didn't like it. I'm just so flabbergasted that yeah. you're know, liking something at the age it's intended for. And getting beat you know, up for it. Good times, but incidentally, since... my girlfriend's daughter, who is thirteen, went to yeah. the, went to school today with a captured prey T shirt on. That's wow. legit. Raising children right. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. I was proud of her. All right. So since the movies came out in two thousand seven, I was in high school. I was a freshman in high school, and since then, I've kind of worn it on my chest as able to be out. I'm not going to try and compare it to someone that age coming out with their sexuality, but it kind of was like coming out. I didn't have to hide it anymore. It was cool again. And in my professional career now, I I don't go out of my way to tell people that I do it, but I definitely don't hide it. I've yeah. got an Optimus Prime business card holder. I've got you know a couple of the Transformers neckties from a couple of years ago that I wear. And if someone finds out, great. I'm not going to hide who I am anymore. It's a big part of what I do. Hell yeah. I'm not, I'm not going back into the darkness. When Don't go back my, into the closet, no. <laughs> so I, I recently started this job I'm at now uh, about a, two months ago, um, and I was trying to stay remote. And the place I ended up that I'm hired at now did video call interviews. Oh. So this is literally like what y'all are seeing right here is the first time they saw me, and they're like, what's that in the background? <laughs> and I was it's like, right. here you go. And they're like, that's awesome. You know, it's it's a young company uh, full of young people. Like, I'm one of the older guys. Um, and to see that uh, you do that makes you fit in that much more. Well, I mean, they were just like, I mean, again, you know, I'm not ashamed or worried about or concerned about it all. I'm a, I'm a grown-ass man, functioning adult, where, you know, bills first, then toys, you know. Um, then family. And, then family. Yeah. yeah <laughs> nah, nah, more toys. Um, but, yeah, so... The, there was absolutely no quibbles about that from anybody. You know, they, they just wanted to see more pictures. They wanted to see more of it. You know what I mean? So it was, it was a nice, like 180 degree flip from the previous place. Yeah. That's you awesome. I, I actually went to my interview from my current uh, uh, employer. I dress, I had, I, it was like casual dress. You know, I had like, like slacks on, but the polo I had on had a Decepticon inst- insignia embroidered on the chest. And he did ask, "What's that on your What's that on your shirt?" And I said, "It's a Decepticon insignia." And he goes, "Decepticon." He said, "Is that like a Transformer thing?" And I'm like, "Yep, it's my hobby." And he's like, "Okay, cool. I guess that's cool." <laughs> you know, I didn't care. A little unsure, but yeah, yeah. But at least Not he judgy. knew. Yeah, at least he knew what it was. You know, I mean, or somewhat. Yep. So Jim, so, yes, do you have any relatable stories? As far as uh, getting picked on for it, mm. I 
not really anything earth shattering in in my uh, in my adult years, but uh, back in school, you know, uh, like in in class, I'd like you sit at my desk, I might might be sketching, you know, just doodling in a notebook, you know, Optimus or, or Mega Man or something, and I I would catch some flack for that on occasion, you know, uh, but around the time I was, uh, you know, my, my my junior senior year, I was I was class of '01. Uh, that's when uh, a lot of the T-shirts and stuff really started coming out at at Hot Topic. That was that was when that first started becoming a thing. Uh, and I remember I uh, I had a, uh, a, a, a there's a black T-shirt and it just had the Generation One, you know, uh, the 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 multicolored chrome looking uh, Decepticon insignia right there on the on the chest. And uh, you know I, I wore that to school on occasion and be that that in a blue flannel shirt because that, that's you know 90s 2000s flannel was still a thing uh i dig that nirvana uh, never, look. Ne- never really got beat up for it or or uh anything like that uh I, I did get i did get my uh binder taken from me and thrown into a, into the boys room there one time but not nothing nothing too traumatic i don't suppose was it your transformers trapper keeper it was one of those uh you remember Years ago, where, where uh, some of the binders had like a like the football or basketball type material on the outside, yeah, yeah, it was, it was one of those. Do you re- do you even remember a trapper keeper? Yes. Okay. I remember those. I remember the Lisa Frank stuff. Uh, you know, just all, all kinds of those <laughs> Lisa Frank supplies. The or the the what, what was it the, the the Yikes pencils? Yeah, all, all that man. I don't you remember, remember those. Yikes pencils. No, I don't know what that is. What? No. Okay, uh, assignment for everybody. Google Yikes pencils. Um, I'm afraid to. They're pretty awesome. I'm afraid to. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. I'll do it. Oh man, it's you can do it. Dude, Trapper keeper is. I don't know what that is. The first video or the first image result is some kid with like a do rag pulled over <laughs> and sunglasses that. on. It is so nineties. It is so nineties. So is he oh, wearing? Matt. Is he wearing Jinko jeans? Dr- <laughs> Dr- 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 I wore a lot of Jinkos. Uh, I don't have it set up. To you got to right Google now. this commercial for Yikes pencils. It starts off with a kid with his cap turned backwards, going, "Yeah, oh, like wow. that." Like okay. seriously, I'll, yeah. this is. I'll look it up. There's after so the much tood in this it video. Is, it is '90s cheese at its finest. Is it Big Bad Battle and Bruticus tood? He's it's worse. Pretty close. <laughs> it's worse. Although I do like Big Bad Battle and Bruticus. Yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> but okay. The thing is, we've talked about negativity from from outside the fandom uh, to us as fans. We've talked about reading, you know, negativity on the boards. Negativity on the boards and on Facebook, social media is always going to be around. People are going to disagree. There's no point in getting arguments over stuff. Really, there's not. What I found is it's highly uh, regular for something that you like particularly that somebody will will trash it on on somewhere. You'll re- you'll read it. I've, I've I see it all the time. But go ahead, Rob. I was going to say what I found that for online, um, well, for one, for Facebook Messenger or Messenger for Facebook groups, I generally do not go to public groups. I I, I stay away from them. I have no interest in them. So you know, there's which. It kind of puts you in a bit of an echo chamber, which is bad, but it's a hobby, so I don't really care. It's not important, you know, to life. <laughs> I can be in an echo chamber for my hobby, and that can be fine. So I don't – and that doesn't mean, like, everybody in our echo chamber always agrees on everything. Quite the opposite. We have a large variety of opinions. Um, but, you know, we also know we're we, – we know each other. So, you know, we say, oh, man, that sucks. Like, I don't take it personally. I can imagine that person saying it and how they would say it, you, you know, and it helps not take that harshly. Um, but when I found that like online, if I'm on boards or something, um, usually I find it good to put out your opinion, you know, if you want to put out your opinion in the mix and then just leave it. Hmm. What I find a lot of internet arguing on boards is person A and person B, I think X, I think Y. Well, I think X. Well, I think Y. Well, I think X. It's like, you're literally just repeating yourselves because you want to be the last person to comment. Hmm. Just grow up a little bit, put out your opinion and go on with your day. You know, some people agree, some will disagree, and it's whatever. I mean, you can engage in that discussion, <clears throat> not take it personally. And, you know, the point is you want to express your opinion. We like to yabber about ourselves. 
It's kind of what humans do. Um, you know, let other people yab about themselves. You don't have to – neither of you are right or wrong. It's a hobby. Um, so just do that and then move on and look forward to the next toy to talk about. Don't get wrapped up in it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I mean, like I said, we've co- we've covered this topic before on the podcast and, um, you know, but, you know, the two of you wasn't on this pod, on, even on the cast at the time. So it's, it's good to have your input uh, on this, uh, you know, good, fresh uh, insight on this. And there's uh, there's something else. There's a different kind of negativity that I want to uh, want to end this on. Uh, and that's negativity from close friends and family. You know, people that you really care a lot about, generally. You know, I mean, I know some of us have family members or in close family members that we don't want to associate with. I mean, it, it happens. Uh, but in general, you know, your family is is the closest ones to you. You can pick your f- uh, friends, but you can't pick your family. Um, and then there's your close inner circle friends. And sometimes those inner circle friends may not necessarily share in what you enjoy you know i mean that you they may be friends for different reasons you know i know i know uh kelly who helped me get tfylp off the ground uh with uh, uh geekexistence.com eight years almost nine years ago now uh, i knew nothing about podcasting uh and the technology needed to to do it he helped me get started off because he's a fellow geek uh he likes transformers he doesn't hate them you know he doesn't collect he doesn't follow transformers he's not a collector as it were uh but he's more of a gamer and more of a he likes gadgets you know and that was the uh, the thing behind behind geekexistence.com uh was you know he like did gadgets and reviews for gadgets and and games and everything and then i would do toys and we we just congealed them together into one website well you know, he's uh, he's in my inner circle of friends. I don't get to talk to him as much anymore because he lives a lot farther away. But I still consider him a close friend. And he's never really given me negativity about Transformers or anything. But if, uh, in a what-if situation, you know, he's the type of friend that you could consider a very close friend. He's a geek, but, um, you know, what if, what if he didn't share in my love of transformers? He thought it was kind of stupid, you know, and I kind of, I kind of ran into this with a, a a partner that we partnered with. And that was, uh, and you know, a little bit of backstory on TFYLP, uh, for those of you who are relatively new to the show, uh, you know, we were, TFYLP was part of geekexistence.com. Uh, we were kind of like the toy, uh, geek part of the aspect of the podcast. Well, there was a guy that partnered with us on the show or, I mean, on the website. And he also did like computers and, and, and tech stuff. He also did guns, you know, which is, is, uh, uh, you know, they're gun geeks too. Um, so about two years in, a year to two years in, he got with Kelly and talked Kelly into kicking the toy geek off the show or off the off the site. You know, we don't need this 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 stupid toy stuff, this stupid transformer stuff, on our website that has legitimate and in his in his eyes legitimate uh, draw. You know, because his his YouTube channel was getting thousands of subscribers. I just had a fledgling YouTube channel at the time. We had probably less than 50 subscribers. Uh, you know, so he didn't I know see what it, that's like. Yeah. He didn't see it as a, as, as a nece- necessary part of the website. So they asked me to leave, you know, Kelly did it against his, his better judgment. Uh, and we've some, since re- reconciled about it, but, um, and that's how I went off and started tfylp.com, kept this podcast rolling. And now, you know, I, you know, uh, Kelly eventually got fed up with uh, the antics and he shut down geekexistence.com uh, as, as a website. TFYLP is still rolling nine years later. So we're the best. Yeah, we're the best. 
Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, but, um, but the thing is, is that here we had an example of a fellow geek that didn't accept my fandom, didn't accept me as a hobby. I, I, I took that as a challenge and I'm like, you know what? This is, this is an affront to me personally. And I stood my ground and I think, I think it's paid off. Uh, that could also come from family members too. I've, re I've received uh, my fair share of criticism from my family. Uh, you know, my mom, especially my dad, you know, why do you waste your money on those stupid toys? They, they don't do anything for you. You can't take them with you to your grave. Well, dad, you can't take your woodwork to your, uh, to your grave with you, you know, you can't take your mom. You can't hobbies or hobbies. Yeah, you can't take your quilting with you to your grave. It's something you do because you enjoy it. This is what I do to enjoy. It. And who doesn't love working with their wood? <laughs> I hate it when the glue goes everywhere at the end. Yeah, Jeez. just, just, just dries all over everything. Yeah, those the, the splinters are, are hell. All uh, you just you just really got to give it a shellacking. Uh, but wax <laughs> on, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, is like both of my mom and dad. I think the most uh, sobering moment was like whenever Rick's book came out here recently, um, and I did about eighty percent of the photography for that book. And to see my name in print and the acknowledgments and to see my uh, my photography logo in the book. And I gave my mom and dad a copy of it. And whenever she opened it up, to see the tears of pride in her eyes was acknowledgement enough. Like, you've actually done something with this hobby, this stupid little hobby of yours. You've actually done something with it. And I'm like, yeah, that not that That's book, That's very Jim. cool. Not that book, Jim. Not that book, uh, Not that book. <laughs> but uh, that no, is one no, of his it's books. The right author, right author, wrong book. Um, but and and if you want that book, there's a link on tftalk.net on tfyop.com. Just scroll down on the right side of the page. There, it's the complete uneventual, unofficial vintage guide, or unofficial guide to vintage transformers. I'll get it out here in a moment. Um, yeah. but what what he said? Yeah, but the thing is, is that. You know, that's an example of family members. You know, of course, my sisters, uh, you know, my, my, my older sisters, they're not necessarily approving. I mean, one of them is kind of like, yeah, it's kind of cool. The other one don't care. And the other one disapproves wholeheartedly. It's kind of like the full spectrum there. Uh, my brother, he collects Hot Wheels, so he can't say anything. You know, and he doesn't. Uh, you know, he, he's cool. Uh, he, he's cool with it. I, I would be but, jealous of him if I were you. Why? His toys are so much more affordable. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that. We got, we got tw Studio Series, you know, $20 for a deluxe. He gets 99 cent cards. Although they may make up for it in quantity. Yeah. Uh, there was, uh, at, at the house that he used to live at in Tennessee, um, there was a room that he had. He had he was like me back in the uh, in the mid-2000s. He had totes upon totes upon totes upon totes that was full of of hot wheels and then the room that he ha that he he had set aside for his hot wheels which was called you guessed it the hot wheel room was wallpapered with sealed hot wheels floor to ceiling i'm like i i, I wow. can dig that i can dig that uh, you know he he since sold that and restarted but you know it, it's cool to have a family member that's that 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 gets it per uh, per se but I know that there are some people out there that have family members that may or may not accept uh, your hobby, uh, and there are certain ways to deal with it. Uh, do you have do you guys have any relatable issue with family members that may not completely understand or approve? My parents don't understand or approve, but they also are just like whatever. You know, I'm confident enough in you know in myself. You know, and I. And you froze. Whatever, out in the sticks, you know, oh, that, that okay. type of thing. You know? And then I got 
with college and all you, you that. Fro- and, your video froze on my end for for a moment oh, there. Everybody oh. froze on my end. Yeah. Me oh. too. Last I heard is, uh, is they they don't understand, but they and then you froze. Yeah. <laughs> um. So to be continued next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, they uh. So I mean, they, they don't understand, but they don't care either. You know, like I grew up poor in a trailer somewhere, so you know. I mean, I went off to college and single wide trailer in the Everglades right here. So, you know, yeah. and I have, you know, and all my cousins on my mom's side, I'm one of like 17 cousins on my mom's side. So, you know, big family on that side, you know, and I've been very successful in my life or whatever. So nobody really ever said that they definitely don't understand it. But again, they don't care if it was impacting my life in a negative manner. I think it would be different. And, and I think that would be good for family. I think mm-hmm. it's good for family to say, hey, I don't care what your hobby is. But, you know, if you're not paying your bills because, you know, you're making bad choices, you know, you've got to pay your bills first before you can buy the plastic crack mm. or the other crack for that matter. Um, you know, I think that's I think that's good to have families. Now, families just I don't understand it. So it's bad. It's like, oh, get off your get off it. Go away. Shut up. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you, you meant the, the die cast metal crack as well as, as mm. being the other crack. Yes. Yes. Okay. 100 percent. Yes. Totally. On the nose. On the nose, in the nose, you know. But, you know, the thing is, is that if family, if family's stepping in for uh, for a reason like that, and, and you're, you're right, if you, you know, go and buy toys with your paycheck and then not have enough money to buy groceries <laughs> for the rest of the week until the next paycheck, and or you pay, go and pay, pay, for some toys or you pay for a, uh, a pre-order from capture prey, just say for example, and then your rent is due later that week and you don't have the money to pay that rent. That's being irresponsible with it, you know, and, and I can understand family or friends stepping in and saying, Hey, you've got a problem here. Uh, because that, that is a form of addiction. You know, uh, let, let's be honest here. It's call it what it is. It's an addiction. And and in, in a way, we are all addicts of this. We're a pa- plastic crack addicts. Uh, there are times that you know I've I have overspent you know recently, uh, but not after I've already paid my bills. It's like I paid my bills, and then I went and bought toys, and I didn't hard, hardly have anything left over to last me till the next paycheck. But I lasted, you know, because you know I had my I had my bills paid for everything. I had enough for gas. You know, food's already in the house. So I, but yeah, there I'm is, sure we've all done a million times like that. But as, you yeah. know, I, if you get it to be a problem, I think it would be good for your family to step in like that. Mm-hmm. I'm lucky that my other hobby is fiscal responsibility. Nice. That's, a, that's how much of a nerd I am. Uh, like paying down debt. Like, uh, let's just say I have to be sitting down when it happens. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you You get serious about it. Hell yeah. <laughs> all right it's a great hobby to have you know okay so we've talked about um you know friends family we've talked about uh co-workers you know people outside the fam uh fandom you know let's say you go to a grocery store you know i'm sure we've all not a grocery store but a a retail store and you throw that transformer up on the conveyor belt we've all gotten that slide eye you know from the cashier like, oh is it somebody's birthday party no it's mine, mine. bitch <laughs> it's mine bitch uh but no seriously we've we've all gotten that uh, at one point or another whether or not you've noticed it or not you've gotten it oh, uh, for sure. uh, whether it not whether it be from employee or the person in line behind you uh we've we've see negativity from fans uh in the fandom uh negativity amongst fans let's talk about a piece of negativity as well that a lot of people may not consider and that's negativity from the toys themselves from just being in the hobby it might get to the point where and it has I always talk to you no it gets oh. to, uh, and it has me Megatron at attack. times it has me at times uh, gotten to the point where I sit down and think, is it worth it to continue this anymore? Do I want to continue this? Um, and well, long story short, I'm still here. I'm still collecting it. I'm still doing it. There comes a, uh, there comes a point when you stop and realize 
you know, do I want to keep doing this? And, you know, Rob said he's pushing late thirties. So, uh, so was, uh, Jim and, you know, I'm, well, we, we, we still have our zygote up here. Uh, but <laughs> don't, 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 don't make me too fast now. I'm, I'm 34. I'm in the early thirties. I'm 26. <laughs> We still have her zygote up here. Jeez. I remember when I was twenty. I'm sorry. We innocent. still have we still have her fetus up here. That's Sergio. He's twenty two. No, he's a zygote. He's a zygote. No, he's, he's fetus. twenty. He's twenty one. Well, no, J- uh, Jack Bruner. He's even younger. I think he's only like nineteen. So, is he really? Yeah, yeah. He's still a, he's still a teenager. Um, do you see do you see Christian's eyes light up? He's like, sweet, someone I can pick on now. Yeah. <laughs> that's why that's why I'm friends with Sergio. Yeah, that's great. So, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, I've gotten times whenever I've, I've, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm pushing, I'm, I'm over 40 now. In two years, I'll be 45 years old. I'll be right up there with Don. Don stopped aging. He, 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 maxed, catch out, up. he, he yeah. maxed out the numbers. You know, I mean, let's, be, let's face it, Don will be pushing 50 before too long, you know. Uh, and and I've known fans. I know I've known collectors. There's a there's a, a great a great great guy. Uh, I'll I'll say his uh, his screen name. Some of you may have seen him years and years ago. Uh, he's since passed on, and and may he rest in peace. Backscatter. Um, he was a a great great guy. He's very quiet in the fandom generally. Uh, and he was actually whenever tftalk.net or well Transformers Homage for a little while had a website. And we had a message board. He was actually one of the few people that was a very uh, staunch regular on there. And I, and, and I remember having some discussions with him. He is a really great guy. But I found out uh, not too long ago that he died a couple years back. And, uh, and that really saddened me because he was such a nice and genuine guy. He was a collector of Transformers that was in his mid-50s. In his mid-50s. He was, uh, he was a full-on adult when Transformers first came out in 1984. Uh, and, you know, he had, from what I understand, his collection was quite quite nice. Uh, you know, you can kind of figure, uh, here we are adults, we know our collecting habits. We know, uh, you know, if we have the opportunity to start collecting a new line and we get hooked line and sinker on it, you know, you're going to collect loose and sealed, especially if it's a new concept or relatively new concept. Well, uh, maybe not Rob. Rob Rob opens those bitches and breaks them in- instantaneously. <laughs> Toys are not investments. Nope. Well, some people uh, do v- view them that way. I don't know if he uh, backscattered did this or not. Are wrong. But the, 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 Toys the, are horrible. But the point is, is that uh, that he was a collector that was in his mid fifties. Uh, he by the time he passed, he might have been pushing sixty. I don't know. Um. But I do remember talking to him, and I do remember he was, uh, you know, he was an elder statesman, as it were, in the hobby. He never got out. He was in the fandom from from 1984 up until the day he died. Um, And I see people like that, and I use that as a beacon of, hey, there is hope in this fandom. Uh, You know, there there is nothing wrong with being a fan of toys even well up into my senior years, you know, and I'm not saying 50 is senior, even though it's getting there. Uh, but at the same time, I've, I've had those thoughts, man, I don't want to be 50 years old and still hunting down new toys. You know, they're, you buy they're them on the internet, you don't hunt them down. Well, even, even online, you know, or 3d print them by that time, who knows? Uh, but just, just the have design. swing by. <laughs> Yeah, have Orson swing by on his. He's moped. gonna be old too. Yeah, I oh, know he's still he's in his late thirties too. He's up there, uh, but but the thing is, you got uh, age is just a number, and I, I there are times whenever I think the desire for living life in a way that doesn't involve the toys, you know, I want to travel more. I want to do things more. I want to be able to go out and uh, and and do things that aren't necessarily transformer related. But I'm going to be honest. My paycheck does not cover the expense of this expensive hobby, life, and another hobby 
to boot. I got the solution for you. Because I, I, I can't, I, I can't be a gigolo. I'm, I'm sorry. That's just not an option. All right, I got a, I got a backup plan for you. Being Mr. Fiscal Responsibility. Budget. You, you put in how much you want to spend a month on Transformers, and if you want to, but do that's just it though. Thing- Transformers are so important that they uh, ultimately come out more important than anything else. But well, I mean, uh, I'm but, not but saying that the choice, desire though, and yeah. that's what's important is yeah. that you're making the choice. And if it comes to time that you know what you know what, hey, I really want to take that trip to Hawaii with the family, then you know if you're if you're you know uh, budget is a hundred dollars a month, I mean, you know, just make up numbers. Then on toys, then you say, you know what, I'm going to crank it down to ten bucks a month. I'm not going to buy, and that way I can get ninety. So you can't get to, anything but uh, but a uh, a Titan Master or a Prime Master. Save up each five week. deluxes a year. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you put that, you take that ten a month, and you put it into the savings for your Transformer budget. You know, you make those decisions to get there because ultimately, there's it's just stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. stuff. Well, it is not important time with your family is important it's just stuff and we i think collectors we all and i mean me too you know suffer a lot from fomo fear of missing out absolutely guess what we're we're wrong um you may think oh man if i don't get on that pre-order i'll have to pay you know double on the on ebay afterwards the amount of toys that happens with is pretty small (laughs) tell me might happen tell me he's he's (laughs) still saving up for generations (laughs) metroplex yeah yeah (laughs) it's like that might happen but it's worth that risk to get that vacation with the family if that's what's more important to you. You know, so it's don't let the stuff control you because it's just stuff. And guess what? If it if that thing does become double the cost later, you're budgeting your money. You let it build up. And if you want to spend a bit, you may, you, know what? you may just want to buy some other stuff. You're not you're not going to die because whatever, because downbeat's not in your collection. I'm, I'm in the same bucket. I'm not going to pay. Two hundred plus dollars for him, but I'll wait for the reissue. I got, it, so. <laughs> I got okay. in on the on ground floor of that one. I'm yeah, just using cool. that as an example of like double well, the price. Even worse. Yeah, but yeah. So you know, it's. I just think you gotta. <clears throat> if you feel that your collection is being negative on you, then I definitely think you should react to it. Whether that's by budgeting, that's by getting rid of some stuff. Um, Christian, I think, has already mentioned it. This podcast, he was buying stuff just because other people were buying it, and then he and he corrected it. I. I used to buy everything Fun Pub, and I dis- actively disliked half of it, but I kept buying it because you know I had it, and I finally got rid of it. And I enjoy it. I enjoy my collection all the much more for that. And I'm currently purchasing some stuff now to make me enjoy what I really enjoy more. And you know what? And it may, again, it's a hobby. You know, do what you want. It's just stuff. And if you change your mind later, you know what? And I decide, you know what? I really want to have everything Fun Pub did again, just for the hell of it. I can go buy it again. It's still out there. I'll budget my money. And shift it, you know what the purchases go to. So don't, don't let your don't let your hobby uh, control you. And if you decide to completely quit collecting, I mean, there are I'm people still, that's done I'm that. Still, you know, yeah. And I'm still going to be chatting with the same friends and the same stuff. Maybe not about Transformers anymore, but even though it's mainly Transformers, we collect other things. We talk about other things. You know, mm-hmm. we communicate through social media. You know, even if it, I get out of Transformers, which I don't see happening, but. As it's still my Transformer family, and nothing will change that. Well, you know, it's like I've I've told you guys before, uh, maybe not you guys specifically, but uh, the guys on the podcast uh, before. There are times whenever I, I really think that there probably will be a time that I will stop, just stop, you know. Um, but I don't think while I may stop collecting. I don't think, and even if I sell off of the biggest part of my collection, there will always be something there. There will always be a collection. There, will, you know, whether it's down to one detolf, you know, uh, there will always be something because, let's face it, you know, I'm 42, getting ready to turn 43 years old, and Transformers. I've been a fan since 1984, since the day they started. Uh, I've been an adult collector since 1999, and uh, and that's been continuous. So, you know, it's been uh, over half of my life, Transformers has been a huge part of it. I've met people like you guys, like the fans out there that's met me at conventions and everything. I've met people that I will never, uh, I could never replace. I would never have possibly met uh, pretty much any other way. 
you know, we connect in ways that, you know, like you said, we sometimes we we cross over in our in our likes. You know, I've met people like that. You know, I've got friends in in I've been accused of being one of the most well-connected truck drivers that that there ever was because, you know, I've got friends who who are doctors, lawyers, actors in Hollywood, uh, you know, and all across the country. And all across the uh, not just the country, but the world. The world, the world. Yeah. And I've got friends that 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 can see me and know my name and know me, uh, you know, whether it be through this podcast or meeting me and interacting with, with me at conventions. You know, it's like I know I can go to the UK and and see Sid, and he knows me, and I know him. I mean, we may not be the closest of friends, but we're we're you well can hang out. We we can hang out. We're well acquainted enough to that. I know him. I could go to Australia and hang out with uh, with Hang. You know, he's a great guy. Hang Yep Chan uh, from the podcast here. He hasn't been able able to be on in a long time because well, Saturday's just is not his. I can't do it. Is is I can't do it day. Uh, but uh, you know, he's a great, phenomenal guy. And and Headmaster Don uh, introduced me to him. Uh, you know, he he's he's a great guy. So you know, I know somebody in Australia. I know somebody in the UK. You know, I know people that's lived in Japan. Uh, it, it, the people that I have met through this fandom, I can, uh, I can't just give up on these people because I enjoy you guys so damn much. Uh, and well, there, there's another one that comes to mind drawn is, the uh, the one that introduced, uh, you and I, yes. Uh, you know, I've met friends that, that, that have now passed on, you know, I, I'll never forget Chad. Chad usually comes up to my in my mind at least once a day. Uh, you know, there's not a, hardly a day goes by that that I, that I don't think of him in way in some way, shape, or form. And uh, if, saw that when you signed on, Jim. Yep. Yep. And and those who are watching the podcast right now, or even looking at the uh, at the logo for the podcast, if you see the little CW up in the upper right hand corner of the podcast logo, that's for Chad Williams. He, he left an indelible mark on this podcast and an indelible mark upon me. Uh, you know, I spoke at the man's funeral. It was one of the most difficult things I've ever done in my life. And I met him through this hobby. And the, and the thing is, and talking about negativity in this fandom, Chad Williams put up with such negativity that his his convention, his small convention, Slagacon, got shut down. I mean, there was literally the last year of his show, there was hardly anybody showed up. I mean, there was a few people, uh, but hardly anybody showed up. That was the one in uh, Florence, right? In Florence, yes. and and his large also um, Blaster. What was his yeah, name? Uh, Buster Jones. It was Buster his last Buster. convention. Yeah, before last, he died. Yeah, uh, and the thing is, is that uh, that Chad had under uh, underwent a basically a smear campaign through the fandom and there were several websites not I'm not going to call any one particular out in, uh, in specific but there were several websites that blackballed him and would not allow him to uh, post any news any information regarding his convention to spread it out to the fandom get it out to the uh, the people who would like to attend simply because they didn't like a certain person that was in attendance or they didn't like the the time of year that he was having it you know and the the man failed because of that the man his his financial life was ruined he was in financial disarray the day he passed away and that's a sad honest truth and you can r directly blame that uh you know yes he made some bad mistakes and bad choices we all do but you can directly blame a lot of that on negativity from the fandom. And he fought it till the day he died. I listened to the man cry. I listened to the man laugh. And I listened to the man fight against the negativity that he, he faced every day. And I will never forget Chad Williams, God rest his soul, for what he has done for this fandom, what he tried to do for this fandom. And uh, what he did for this podcast behind the, the scenes. Yeah. Some of our yeah, very know, first celebrity it, guests, he got them for us. You know, we're talking about the negativity, but, you know, you're also talking about a lot of positivity. And this even started out with, you know, Jim saying, don't forget who in introduced us. 
you know, and uh, I made it to the last two Slag of Cons. You know, they were small shows, but I had a lot of fun at those I did shows. Too. Every one. I went to all but the first yeah. one. Yeah. I, um, recently I was, my next video is going to be a room tour because I'm about to start upgrading my shelves and I kind of wanted this moment in time for Should've it. Should have bought black. And, yeah. And so, <laughs> as I was going through my shelves, um, every time I came upon one of the Slag of Con customs, I had to stop and talk about it for a quick second. You know what I mean? And so, well, I definitely didn't know Chad as much as you guys did. Um, you know, I still got to hang out with him and talk with him some. Um, and I know he put he put a lot into it. But so I'll, there was definitely a lot of negativity with that. Um, the, to me, the part that sticks around, for at least, for, again, for me, um, maybe not with his family with some of the financial issues, unfortunately, but um, is the positivity. You know, when I look on those customs, you know, it brings me back to those events. Um, and I don't have my poster, my SlaggerCon posters up or anything, but I, I see them. They're, they're in my room right outside of here, you know, and I'll see them there and I, and I kind of think about it. I got my stack of SlaggerCon stuff. Got, I have a, I um, have a Vector Zeta, not, <laughs> not just any Vector Zeta, Chad's Vector Zeta. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I think, you know, through the darkness, there's a light, um, in, in a way. So a lot of the positivity can still come out of that stuff. Well, and that's, I, I think and, that's what's important to focus on. And that's something Jim can attest to, too is that despite all the crap that he had to put up with on a day-to-day basis, whether it be financial or th- from the fandom, it was very difficult, very, very difficult for him to enjoy this hobby. But you know what? He still found a way, and he was still happy. He was still happy, even though he shed a lot of tears and he, and he, he had a lot of strife because of all of this. He still was a happy man, and I t- and that's one thing that I learned from him is that he uh, was able to take negativity and turn it around into a positive for himself and his family. Um, yes, yeah, Slagacon ruined it, but that didn't stop him from uh, from enjoying his tra- uh, his Transformers. Matter of fact, his friends and family knew that he loved his Transformers so much they surrounded his casket. With his uh, with uh, much of his collection, uh, and while uh, you know, and, and and because he identified with this hobby, me personally, and I'm I'm going to go on record as saying this, you know, as much as I love Transformers, I don't want them around my casket <laughs> whenever I die. Uh, you know, I don't I don't mind some references for, uh, here and there. Uh, my but, wife knows who to contact. She's got a couple names. It's like if I get hit by a bus. These couple of people here will help you sort through this mess and just yeah. give them a commission and work it out. My, you know? my girlfriend uh, and my family knows the same. You know, uh, pretty much Orson can uh, can help, and then there's several of you guys that that, that could come in in the in the event that this uh, that something would happen. But you know, the fandom is my hobby, but it is not me. Uh, you know, Chad actually was kind of. The antithesis of the, uh, antithesis of that. We've actually spoken uh, uh, several times. Uh, he the he said that the hobby wasn't him, but you can tell a lot of ways it was, and it was very important to him. And it was his dying wish that his children get his collection, uh, specifically uh, his older son who uh, who enjoyed Transformers way more, and he got he got them, and. The last time, last I was able to talk uh, to Kristen, his wife, his son still enjoys them to this day, mm-hmm. you know. And and j- it's just a testament of of how the man could stay positive and turn the ultimate negativity. Uh, you know, his his convention, his life was actually ruined uh, through the fandom, but that didn't that didn't stop him. He 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 kept going and found a way to enjoy it. And that's something we can all take from it, uh, you know. And I don't mean to bring this up to uh, to be a downer at the uh, at near the end of this this podcast, but I think it's a it's more a ray of hope uh, for for people who have who feel really down and really negative in this fandom. Look at Chad Williams. Uh, the man was an example. Look, at, he he was an example, and he was a good man. And like I said, this this podcast probably wouldn't be around today still if it weren't for him because 
all those nights that I bounced ideas off of his uh, his noggin and and he gave me ideas and thoughts and changes and everything um you know he was actually the the one that uh, that uh, spurred me to uh, start the YouTube channel uh whenever we came back you know because you know he wanted to to help it to use uh, he wanted it to help him as a vehicle to help Slagacon grow and we talked about this and you know we we tried to help it uh, help it grow and everything we could do to help help get the word out there because at no time did I say no Chad I'm not going to I'm not going to promote that I, I wanted to help him, you know, and the same thing with TF Expo out in Kansas. Uh, you know, they're a small convention, uh, and they actually spoke to Chad. Uh, the original uh, uh, organizers of that spoke to Chad trying to help get it organized. And, you know, that's, that convention's it's growing, and now they've moved to Kansas City uh, from Wichita. You know, this is their first, you know, first big step moving away from their original city. And I hope that people are able to check it out. You know, I, I'd love to go this year, but I'm not quite sure it'll be in the cards. Um, but if you get a chance to go to TF Expo out in Kansas city this year, uh, look them up on, uh, on their website. I don't have it handy right this moment, but, uh, just search for TF Expo and you'll find it and, and you'll find their date and their location there. I, I urge you to, uh, uh, to check them out. Um, it's a great little show. Um, but you know turning negatives into positive that's what this this episode's about you know how to deal with it i hope you guys have enjoyed talking about this i know it's something that you know not a lot of people feel comfortable talking about but i think it helps to hear other people hey you know they have these problems too or they've encountered these problems maybe i don't feel as bad about it now you fucking nads. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I just, I just hope it's helped. You know, I hope you, uh, you guys have enjoyed it. You guys have any, uh, any thoughts that you want to talk about real quick? Well, uh, ultimately as far as, uh, negativity, uh, you know, whether it be inside the fandom or outside the fandom, uh, when, when it all boils down, you, you engage in a hobby and you collect what you collect because of what it means to you, you know, whether it be childhood nostalgia, uh, fond memories of, you know, uh, family members from, from your youth, or maybe just, just a positive experience, uh, you had, you know, playing with friends in, in the backyard. I mean, any, any number of things, uh, but ultimately it's just, it's just how it made you feel back then. And you trying to recapture that or, or keep that, warm feeling that the the hobby or, or the collection gave you uh even if it's even if it's just one piece you know i, I actually but before we went uh before we went and started recording here tonight i actually went through a, a, i don't know if you can see my entertainment center over here no it's um, not free. okay yeah it's not the great, greatest because i got a glare from the window but anyway on the one side here this glass door behind it uh are all the uh, Transformers and stuff that I, I and my brother had as kids. I pulled them all out of there, and they're here on my desk right now in front of me. I've been fidgeting with those. You mean like the uh, actual physical toys you had as a kid? Well, most of them are, are ones I've replaced over the years okay. due to various reasons, house fires and that, but but there are, there are a few items that are the originals, yes. That's very cool. Um, and I figured given, you know, given this topic we were going to be discussing, I figured, you know, what better way to, to help my focused on that than to pull out, you know, some of the greatest ones. Always, uh, always close to me. This is my original Cyclonus from my childhood. Purple bunny. Yep. And if you look, it's the blue ear version. Ah. Yeah. And of course, right next to him. And I always keep it in arms, really arms reach my original weird wolf and this is the one from my childhood the very actual toy you know and it's you know it's it's always nice to have a reminder you know a lot of people i know they've they've said before that they don't have their very first transformer ever anymore uh but i'm one of those few that that can say yes i still have it it's right up here in, in the uh I, I keep it in a, a knockoff box now 
It's a, a part of Devastator, Bone Crusher. Uh, but I still have it. And, you know, it's always nice to have those little reminders around of where you came from. You. Yep. It's really awesome. Yes. Christian, turn that frown yeah. upside down and say something positive. Oh, well, I've still got my original Transformer 2, my G2 Space Case. Sweet. That's a nice one to have, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Because of the ball joints, he spent some years not together, but I, I put him back together. Right when I started collecting. And through the magic oh. of future floor polish? <laughs> I've never done it. I did get a, a carded sample of him to, to keep on my wall, but the, the original one sits on my dresser. Still, I'm not still floppy? <laughs> he still keeps very his ball floppy. joints in his dresser. No, but I think, uh, <laughs> I, I think the negativity thing comes down to just live your life. If, if you got negative people coming at you, don't give them the time of day. Even if it's your family, your friends... If they really loved you, they wouldn't say bad things about what you love. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you do you. We like you. And that's what matters. Yeah. Rob? You know, I don't think I have anything to add that people haven't already covered. Awesome. I think okay. I said, said, it good, said it for me. And, and Jim, you've, uh, you're pretty much the same? Fundamentally, I mean, I, I think the overall takeaway from this, you know, uh, as far as, you know, what, what all this means to us, it, it kind of echoes, uh, uh, going back, you know, circle back around, it kind of echoes Chad's approach is it, it made it personal. You know, because that was his number one thing it, is uh, right. with uh, with Slagacon is make it personal. Precisely. As a matter of fact, he, and, and, that and was his is. slogan, and, wasn't it, for a while? Let's, let's make uh, it personal. I think for the third or fourth year, I think it was. Uh, but, and and that that couldn't be further that that that, that couldn't be uh, truer, hmm. uh, as it it was personal then, and it is personal now, and it probably always will be. Whether we still collect years from now or we give most of it up, it's always going to have that special place in our heart for for whatever reason. You Absolutely. know, and no no amount of negativity is going to destroy that. No, and you know, like I said before, you know, we've covered this topic before, and I'm sure we'll cover it again because it's something that at least once every year, every other year, uh, I think we find it, uh, we need to find it important because there's always going to be somebody new, either whether, whether it be to the podcast or to the hobby itself, that's going to be running into these very problems, these very thoughts, uh, you know, and there are some people that's been in, in the hobby for, for years, uh, that may be thinking, you know, is it worth it anymore? Uh, you know, put up with this negativity, to put up with this hobby. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, the, sometimes the toys themselves. Oh, my God, I, you know, I'm spending so much money on these things. What if I spent this money on something else? But the thing is, you've got to ask yourself, you know, you're spending money on these because you enjoy them, aren't you? If you're not, then that's why you should stop. If you don't... Sorry, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, if you don't enjoy spending your money on these, then you you, you just need to stop. Cough, if, cough, Nick G. Cough, cough, <laughs> Peter Chavez. But if you but if you are enjoying it, keep on. You know, find a way uh, to make it positive. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's a hobby, not a chore. Don't make it a chore. Bottom line. Well, I hope this episode has been helpful, and uh, uh, I think everybody said their piece. I want to thank uh, Christian, Rob, Jim, uh, for all being on tonight, and I th thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you love what we do, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash tfyop. Helps us keep the lights on and helps us uh, do upgrades and everything. And uh, once the new computer's in, set, uh, in, in place, then I'm going to start working on some microphones for some of you, like <coughs> Jim. <laughs> I know you've got one, but I've got a condenser mic. Okay, it Jim sounds good. It His does. It, crap. It does sound better than it uh, than he buck ninety nine at Goodwill. That's a deal. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I, I honestly, I think it's off a karaoke machine. I'm not sure. Hey, who knows? This was a twenty dollar headset from Amazon. <laughs> hey, it works. It whatever works, whatever works. But the thing is, is that. We can't keep going without you. I mean, it's a very expensive thing to do to, uh, to put out a good quality podcast. Uh, you know, and as you can see... One day we'll put out that quality podcast. 
well, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been watching the recording here. Everything looks good according to the sound meters uh, and everything. Everything sounds good. So, you know, I, I'm thinking we're making some progress here. Uh, so, you know, and that, and that's just a sign that that it is that it is helping and help uh, helping us grow. Uh, and the best thing that you can do to help us grow is subscribe, like our videos, like our podcasts, and tell other people about us. Tell you know nobody will know if you don't say, hey, check out this TFYLP podcast. They're a bunch of good guys. Uh, they talk about stuff that a lot of other podcasts don't touch on. You know, we've even touched the subject of death before and your collection. Yes, we went there. Look it up on our, on our website. It's, it was actually one of our best episodes we've ever had, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of people gave us some good things. We've even had an episode with our girlfriends and wives on. Yeah. We, we needed to do that again sometimes. So yeah, actually, uh, I'm, lo- I'm looking at that. I'm looking at maybe uh, uh, talking to female Transformer Ooh, fans. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Not Christian's girlfriend. Whoa. <laughs> Why is my hand Christian's girlfriend? Hey, That's actually a better situation than what he was implying. <laughs> <laughs> a better one, huh? He's at least another person. <laughs> friend, on, hey, friends, <laughs> friends help friends out. You know, the alternative would be just sit on your hand for a few minutes and let it go numb. The uh, stranger, so, yeah. <laughs> the stranger. And here I thought we crossed the line with Rail Racer. No. <sighs> hey, there's always new lines up. to cross. Hey, I, I'm a truck driver. I have I have that right. <laughs> but. Hey, you don't listen to a a podcast named Transformers for your listening pleasure <laughs> and expect it to be a, a super clean, you know, so, hey. And we do have that explicit thing on, on the iTunes, so, hey. We're just not, we're not, we're not super raunchy. You know, we, don't, we don't talk about vaginas or anything like that here. You just did, you broke it. Damn it. There's nothing wrong with vagina is a medical term, and guess what, half the world has one. Get over it. <sighs> And some people no. are one. <laughs> I don't think that's accurate. Yeah. They just right. look they look like a big pile of roast We probably better wrap up before we say something that is yeah, immortalized we, we on YouTube go. that is going to haunt you. Oh, we've done that long ago. <laughs> time and time again. But thank you for joining us uh, this week. Check us out on Twitter, at TFYLP. Good night, everybody. Later. Peace, you